my channel for just a very fun holiday video. I got my Christmas sweater on for the occasion from one of our sip and thrifts together. And today I want to do something kind of, kind of fun. I want to just taste test various holiday treats with you. If you don't know this about me, I have celiac disease, so I am gluten-free, and I also have some different allergies. The hardest one is probably the egg allergy. So during this time of year, I get a little bit sad about all the treats I can't have and all the treats that everybody else gets to have, like eggnog. I really hope we can find some vegan eggnog today to try together. So I wanna go out and try find different fun holiday treats that I can actually eat and then taste test them and let you know if they are good or trash, because a lot of gluten-free vegan types of desserts are trash, so not all of these things will be vegan, I'm sure, but I'm sure some of them will be. Just things I can eat in general. I know I have a lot of fellow friends on here with food allergens or a lot of celiac buddies or hopefully it's just fun to see someone eat some something yummy. So let's go to Whole Foods and see what we can find. Isn't this how it's supposed to be? Making our Christmas memories. Okay, so far I found these lesser evil mini gingerbread cheesecake cookies and chocolate peppermint dipped almonds. I'm really excited about both of those. These could be good to try for s'mores by the fire. That's a Christmassy thing, right? Oh my word, Oatly makes a cold brew coffee with oat milk nog and I love eggnog. I'm so excited to try this. It's like all my favorite things combined. And a couple last minute things, we got a vegan and gluten-free apple pie and then snickerdoodle cookie dough bites. That's the most holiday I could find. One more thing that I found on my way out that I'm really excited for because it's both vegan and gluten-free is white chocolate peppermint flavored kettle corn. And my favorite holiday treat of all time is peppermint bark. So just literally white chocolate and peppermint. In everyday life, I prefer milk chocolate and dark chocolate to white chocolate, but peppermint bark, I hate when people mix in dark chocolate or milk chocolate into the peppermint bark. I like just pure white chocolate and peppermint and that is it. All right, we are home with our little holiday treat haul, guys. I'm fully aware. This video is not going to perform well. <laughs> I'm just doing this because I want to. So I'm really, really excited. I have all the prices of everything here because I think it's important to compare what they cost versus how they taste and if it's worth it or not. So I actually haven't eaten yet today and uh, I'm very excited to have a breakfast of dessert. I don't know where to start. I guess let's start simple. Skinny dipped almonds. I believe, oh. Huh, kind of misleading. These are not vegan. It's funny that they advertise plant protein on the front, which is true, but normally whenever I see the word plant on the front, I'm like, oh, plant-based. But no, this does have real milk, but this is completely safely gluten-free, and I also personally cannot have peanuts, so I get very excited when I find something almond-based that I can have. Sweetened with maple sugar. These had a lot of dust just puff off of them. Cost $4.49. Five dollars for this bag. Oh wow, I was not expecting that at all. These are almost like dusted in a confectioner sugar. I thought that they, I guess the picture on the outside does show that, but I thought that they were gonna have partially shiny chocolate. Let's, ooh, that smells really good. Little taste. Mm. I love that the like powdered sugar kind of melts in your mouth. I'm not getting a lot of peppermint. The peppermint is very, very, very faint. I think the only peppermint is in the sugar coating on the outside. Would I accidentally eat a whole bowl of these without realizing it? Yes. If I could change something, I wish it was more pepperminty. I do love how clean it is. Out of 10, I would give these a seven. They're really good. Just wish they had more peppermint. Worth the price point too. Nuts are expensive. Nuts can be pretty pricey. I'm excited to try these. I expected these to have eggs because Lesser Evil makes something I used to love, which are essentially like fake puff Cheetos but made out of egg whites. They were so good. If you can have eggs, love them. This sounds weird, but one of the flavors was huevos rancheros and it's so, so good. Egg whites are the part of eggs I can't have, so I can never have those again. Very sad. I can't have yolks. These are completely vegan and keto. However, it does contain milk. Where is the milk? Oh, okay. There's some butter in this. So this one is not vegan. We're getting to the vegan things next. Almost everything after this point is vegan. Almost everything. Three cookies is only 110 calories, and the first ingredient is almond flour, which I love. I'm interested. These are gingerbread cheesecake. Is there some sort of filling? These were $5.99. That's a little bit pricey. Oh, so this is what that looks like. It looks like a soft baked ginger snap. Let's see if there's a filling or not. Nope. In the words of Paul Hollywood, these are a bit stodgy, <laughs> a little bit sticky. They're not sweet at all. They're kind of tart. 
not getting a lot of ginger. These are kind of terrible. <laughs> Honestly, I'm gonna give these a two out of 10. I think that they should have just increased the calories and increased the sugar and try to make those a little bit better. Dang, what a waste of money. Well, this is why I'm trying them so you don't have to and you don't have to waste your money. If you can have eggs, eat their egg puffs. They're great. These, terrible, two out of 10. That's my official score. Before moving on in this video, I just wanna give a really quick shout out and thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I have been talking about Skillshare for over two years now. Y'all know that I love them. And if you're not familiar with them, they are an online learning community and they have thousands of classes. Their classes can help you explore new skills or deepen your passions and random hobbies or just be more creative as a person. In fact, if you're here because you're a foodie, they have so many fun food, baking, cooking type classes. There's one called Easy and Versatile Baking, One Yeast Dough That You Need to Know, and it's by Julia Tertian, who is a chef. So many fun things. They are specifically curated for learning, so there's no ads, and they're broken up into little modules, so you can watch one module, you can watch a whole class, you can kind of do it on your own time, which is really nice. And if you get an annual subscription, it comes to less than $10 a month, which in my opinion, you can't really put a price tag on learning, but if you have to, that is a really good deal. <laughs> I know Christmas season is around the corner and gifting a membership is such a good thing, especially a virtual gift you can send to someone. And it's a perfect gift for the person that kind of has everything. Nobody has learned everything in the world so they can continue to learn. I will include a link in the description below where for a limited time, that link will get you a free trial of the premium subscription. So highly recommend checking that out. Thank you to everybody who has used my links in the past. It helps me out so much. And thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I love you so much. Okay, we'll get the last non-vegan thing out of the way in case you're watching this for the vegan aspect and not the gluten-free aspect. And then everything after that point, yep, 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 is vegan. So I love s'mores and I love making them at Christmas when you already have a fire going in your fireplace anyways. It's been really hard for me to find good graham crackers that I can actually eat. The first ingredient in this is butter, the very first ingredient. If you don't know this, I always just assume that like simple things like this are common knowledge, but I sometimes remember that some people don't know things about nutritional labels, but the order of the ingredients is by mass in the actual recipe. So the first ingredient is the greatest mass total. So butter is first, that means that there's more butter in this than anything else. Second is brown sugar. So there's more butter and sugar in this than even flour. Then third is brown rice flour. flour. So since there's different types of flours, there probably is overall more flour than butter or than sugar, but they just use three different types of flours in this mix. This costs $5.29. It's a big box. Oh, okay, well they're not necessarily cute. This is what they look like. They kind of look like regular graham crackers got a little burnt in the oven. They're also thinner than I was expecting. They smell delicious. Made with real honey, no hydrogenated oils, no added trans fats. Uh-oh, <laughs> those are really good. <laughs> you can taste that butter is the first ingredient. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like eating a butter cookie, like a kind of shortbread taste. Surprisingly, not as sweet as I was expecting, which is probably a good balance if you're using them for s'mores since marshmallows are essentially just sugar and you got chocolate. These are really good. Okay, nine out of 10, really good, really good. If I can improve it, I'm weird about this. I wish that there was a little bit more salt, have a depth of sweetness instead of it being like a surface level sweet. And you'll probably hear me say that a lot whenever I'm eating things. I like to add a little bit of saltiness to sweet things because I think it rounds out the flavor a bit more. That would be my only critique for that. Otherwise, so good. I really want to try this, but I feel like we should save it. Let's save the let's save the one I'm most excited for for last. Okay, this was an impulse buy on the way out. I think it was on sale. Yes, normally $6.49. It was a dollar off. It was $5.49, which this is a big bag of kettle corn. The only ingredients in this is popcorn, sugar, sunflower oil, natural flavor, salt, and red radish color. Love when they use naturally derived color from fruits or vegetables instead of an artificial coloring. My bone to pick with popcorn usually is that the flavor is a little bit too light. Hard to find. Some people might like that. Oh, interesting. The smell is more vanilla-y than pepperminty, in my opinion, and I don't see any red coloring in that at all. So it looks like they didn't need to use that, but let's give this a little taste. Mmm, I am pleasantly surprised. I think I got one that was very coated. Looking in here, there's some that are not coated at all, and there's some that are very coated. 
Mm. The ones that are really coated are really good. Very pepperminty. I do get a lot of vanilla flavor in here as well. So I think if you get a big handful, chances are you're gonna get one or two of the really good coated ones and then the rest are gonna be lightly coated. Mm -hmm. Well balanced. I might give these also a seven out of 10. Like they're really good. They're probably not the first thing I would reach for. I think it's worth the price point because there's seven servings in here. So it's less than a dollar a serving. I'm pleased. I would recommend. Do you consider snickerdoodle a more wintry treat or no? I feel like anything cinnamony is typically more wintry. Love that this is free of the top eight allergens and also born in Austin, Texas because those are my home roots. These are Leah's Better Bites. I think these are pretty pricey. $6.99, $7 for six cookies. Each one of these bites is more than a dollar a piece. That is pretty pricey. And the first ingredient sugar, the second is chocolate. The third is flour, and then the fourth is vegan butter, and then it goes on to some lesser things. Ingredients are not the healthiest, meaning I'm probably gonna really like the way they taste. <laughs> Let's be honest. The ingredients for the lesser evil ones were pretty clean, and they tasted terrible. Okay, kind of like truffles. They're meant to be refrigerated. They're kind of already melting a little bit just from the drive home. I'm gonna give this a taste, and we'll take a look on the inside. Oh, interesting. It really is like a like a cookie dough bite. So the inside looks like it's basically completely raw cookie dough, essentially. The only thing that kind of throws me off about raw cookie dough as opposed to a baked cookie is the graininess of the sugar. When the sugar is baked, it becomes more caramelized and easier to chew. Cookie dough has that like sandy feeling in your mouth kind of. That sometimes throws me off, but that's just part of cookie dough. I would say if they marketed this as just a chocolate chip regular cookie dough, it would be great. Snickerdoodle, I'm not getting at all. Did they even add cinnamon? Oh my gosh, cinnamon is way down there. It's one of the last ingredients. I'm not getting the snickerdoodle flavor at all. If they marketed this as chocolate chip, I would give this a six out of 10. As a snickerdoodle, I'm gonna have to give it a five out of 10 because I really just don't get that taste. So it ended up being not very holiday. Tastes like cookie dough. If you really want good cookie dough that's both vegan and gluten-free, highly recommend Sweet Lauren's. Oh my gosh, it's so good. The best cookie dough and the best like ready to bake cookies. Love them. I've been trying to get them to sponsor me for years. It has not worked. <laughs> I should have got a fork. I think I'm gonna need a fork. This is more Thanksgiving holiday, I guess, than Christmas holiday. Oh, it's already baked, but best served warm. Interesting. So I'm probably not going to do it the service that it deserves, but it says so good warmed in the oven and served with ice cream, yum. I will keep that in mind when scoring it. The first ingredient is apples, very impressive. Second, white rice flour. And then third, soy-free buttery spread. And that's basically it. It goes down into very, very small little quantities of stuff after that. Everything after that point is less than 2%. This was $8.99 for this tiny pie. And I'm sure there's what, three servings in here. That's that's pretty expensive. Okay, I got my fork. Oh, it's kind of cute. Oh, it also looks a bit stodgy. That's what it looks like. Like I said, I'm gonna keep an open mind of what this would taste like warmed. Wish I had the time to do it right now, but I have a doctor's appointment in like an hour that I didn't know about. <laughs> that I forgot about. I thought it was tomorrow, long story. Okay, let's give this a little taste. This is what it looks like up close. There's a very thin crust, a layer of filling, and then a very thick crumble on top that looks looks a little doughy. Let's see. Mm, the taste is really good. I love that it's a little bit tart. Can definitely taste the lemon juice that they added in there. I think it's a nice balance of flavors. The dough, the crust I should say, is more doughy, kind of crumbly. No fault to itself because gluten-free is really hard. I'm sure, I'm sure it would be much better warmed, but at the moment I would say taste, eight out of 10. Texture, three out of 10. So overall, give that six-ish if we round up out of 10. Price point's high, but I do think it would be much better warmed and with ice cream. Flavor's great. Really appreciate the lemon juice, which I know is kind of just part of apple pie, but I can really taste it and I love tart things. Mm -hmm. Last but not least, hype this up in my mind so much. It says, the sweet oat milk delight is packed full of festive holiday flavor and cut with the best coffee around. Stumptown cold brew. Happy holiday, friends. Vegan, gluten-free, dairy-free. Let's read the ingredients. First ingredient, oat milk, then cold brew, then cane sugar. But how do they get the flavor of eggnog? Low uric acid rapeseed oil, natural flavors. There's a lot of different things in here. Sea salt, uh, okay. Give this a taste. How much sugar? 14 grams of sugar in this. So I'm expecting this to be pretty sweet, which I mean, that's why we love eggnog, right? Oh, the smell actually does have a little bit of eggnoggy smell to it. Oh, maybe it's the fact I just had one, two, three, four, five, six other desserts. 
but it's not sweet at all. And it actually really does have an eggnoggy taste to it. Coffee is a light flavor in there. I would say eggnog first, coffee second. It's not as rich and full-bodied as I would expect, but I guess it is half eggnog, half coffee, eggnog. But I really like it. I'm very impressed with this. It's kind of like a little hint of holiday cheer. Not overwhelming. Overall, give this, I give it a nine out of 10 if you don't like overly sweet drinks. Happy holidays! This was so fun. I just love everything Christmassy and I have definitely been on a sugar kick lately. It's not healthy, but it is very happy. So thank you for being happy with me. I love y'all with my absolute whole heart. I hope you have the best rest of your day and I will see you in a video very soon. Bye. Isn't this how it's supposed to be? Making our Christmas memories. Oh.